The Tour de France started with a bang this year in Spain. Yeah, riders, spectators and commentators have tipped it as one of the hardest starts in modern tour history. But how hard really was it? Now, Trinity Peaks have given us the entire data of Mark Cavendish Stage 2. And let me tell you, it was a brutal one, wasn't it? Yep, and Hank and I are heading out on a quite tough loop here in South of Wales in the UK to try and recreate some of the efforts needed to survive that brutally tough stage. Can we survive it? Will it break us? Oh, here's to find out. Only one way to find out too. Ha <laughs> ha! Come on, Hank! Ah! Mark Cavendish, joint all-time record holder for most stage wins at the Tour de France. The man's a living legend, but away from all those sprinting wins, he knows a thing or two about suffering through the tough days for a chance at sprint victory. Now, unfortunately, Mark Cavendish wasn't able to finish the 2023 Tour de France due to a crash that broke his collarbone. Yeah, and I think I can speak for everyone in saying we were so gutted to see it because I personally believe he would have been so close to getting that all-time tour stage win record, putting himself ahead of Eddie Merckx. And as you can see in his data, he was definitely in flying form to be able to do that. Yeah, now talking over data, we've been able to, through Training Peaks, get hold of his data for stage two of the Tour de France. Now, I could think I could speak for everyone that that was an absolutely savage day. Even Mark Renshaw, that's Mark Cavendish's right-hand man, said it was one of the toughest starts to modern day tour history. Yep, so stage two was 206 kilometers, five hours ride in time, four big climbs. Average watts was 206 with a normalized power of 270 watts. At his weight, around 72 kilos with a threshold of around 310 watts. That's a pretty big day. I mean, that's absolutely massive if you ask me. And then rack up a TSS score, of 300. Now that's gonna put some fatigue in their legs. Yeah, TSS is the metric training peaks used to measure your load of a specific session and the fatigue you're putting in your legs. So 100 TSS is roughly equal to about an hour at threshold. So you can see how 300 would be a pretty mammoth day. Oh, you're telling me. Now away from all of those big overall numbers, there are still some big single efforts during that stage, starts you off with the first hour. Now, Mark Cavendish averaged 180 watts for that hour, but interestingly, his normalized power was 253 watts. Now, normalized power is basically discounting all the zero watts, so when you're not pedaling. So starting off our ride, let's see if we can match it. What? That first hour racing is always tough, is when the breakaway is going, the pace is high. 180 watts, that's two and a half watts a kilo. Seems Tomorrow. doable, doesn't it? It seems doable. That's around 245 watt average for me. Oh, Only God. time like the present, mate. But there's no spectators. We're not going for the breakaway. We're not as fit as we once were. And we're definitely not as fit, but uh, here goes nothing, I guess. Here we go. Right, let's, oh. uh, let's try oh, and get the break, mate. Oh, God. If you look at Mark's data and his power numbers on that file, you can see those spikes where he does have to dig in. This isn't a uniform effort. So you can't just go out and pace yourself. You're at the mercy of what your competitors are doing. And I'm at the mercy of Hank at the moment. He's absolutely drilling it. <laughs> 35 km an hour average. His speed for the stage in total was 40.1. <laughs> so, whoo! Three, two, one, we did it! Oh, Hank, my legs. Oh. You've absolutely <sighs> just battered me there. Yeah, first hour done, and you averaged 254 watts. I'm happy with you? that. Yeah, we're on the pace, we're on the pace. We're doing well, first hour in. Yeah, we are doing well. Now let's dive back into Mark's race. Now once he had finished that hour, they then went into the third category climb, the Col du Udana, and then straight after that, the fourth category climb, where over that segment, he had to average 284 watts for 33 
minutes straight after the hour we've just done. So there's really no let up, no. is there? The pace is on on this stage. But after that comes the real key part for Mark to survive. It's a 50 minute chunk, if you look at the data. And the key part in that is a steep climb. There's three steep climbs, but the key one for me is this unclassified climb. 2K long, an average gradient of 6.3%. Oh. Come on, Connor. Wait until you hear what you did up it. Now, looking at Mark's data, over some of that segment, Mark stayed in the bunch, but it really did cost him. At one point, he had to sit at 384 watts for five minutes and 20 seconds. That's 5.4 watts per kilo. This is a key part of any race, and especially in this stage, because it's a bit too early. There's still two hours of racing to go to let yourself get a drop from the peloton and ride in. You still have to hang on and survive. So 5.4 watts a kilo, that is Tour de France pace. 486 watts for me. And that's and when the race is really on, isn't it? It is on, and you just have to kind of grit and bear it. But now I really don't know. I don't think I'm going to be able to manage that. I think it's more going to be a case of how long. Yeah. But let's give it a go anyway, shall we? I mean, we've got no choice, buddy. Here goes nothing. Key part. Can we hang on to the peloton in the tour? When the tour is on. <laughs> this is going to be tough. OK, right, here we go. Three, two, one. Right, we're off. Everything's burning. So I'm pushing on. I'm on about 450 watts at the moment. I'm dying. So I'm just gonna dig in now. Three minutes to go. I forgot how savage these efforts are. Two minutes to go. I've dropped. Can't hold the power. But I'm just pushing on to the end now. Seeing how my effort compares. Curious myself. Oh, power's actually good at start. Then it just dropped off after a couple of minutes. And then two minutes ago, I was definitely not there. I'm going to go back down and find Hank. He's had a bit of a mechanical. Just take a look at the numbers and see how it compares. But those efforts are savage. Look how hard they are in the middle of a stage at the start of the Tour de France. And you're doing that to yourself. Right. Quite good fun, though, in a weird way. <laughs> Right, I'm going to go and find Hank. So a slightly bad mechanical meant that, unfortunately, I missed out that section of the race. But Connor... OK, mate. You did pretty well in that, didn't you? A very timely puncture there for you. Yeah, sorry about that. Missing out on the really intense five-minute effort. Yeah, the one that I'm not good at. Well, I did make <laughs> it to the top, and I was feeling pretty good. Um, so I averaged 430 watts, five minutes. Yeah. Which I was really happy with. Only 50 watts off what we were kind of aiming for. So I was thinking that's good, but then I, I, I delved into the data a bit more, download the file onto Training Peaks, just analyse it there. And I think really it was a minute and a half that I held it for, and even then I was a bit off. So I did 465 watts for a minute and a for half. Me. 30 seconds, first 30 seconds, I was on pace. After that, I dropped off, so I would have been dropped. Yeah. Okay, so we're up and riding again, heading towards the last climb, last effort of the day. And I've got to say, it's super interesting delving into a rider's data like this. It almost feels like you're following in the footsteps and you get an insight into every single pedal stroke that they put down one of the biggest races in the world. And pro teams, every pro teams, are using files like this to analyse their riders' data and make sure that they're tracking their progress, analysing the effort, comparing maybe why certain moves worked and certain moves didn't, and also tracking fatigue throughout these races, making sure they can adjust their tactics based on the effort they're putting out day in, day out. 
So whilst we're looking at one of the best riders in the world here, anyone can use the platform to understand their riding and learn what's needed to build form and work towards a specific goal. Now though, we're working towards the Gospel Pass. Highest mountain pass in Wales. Time for our final effort. Okay, we're at the bottom of the Gospel Pass, but it must be said that after that last short climb we just did, in the race, I think it's probably where Cavendish just got unshipped from the peloton. So it's a 4.5k climb, around 5.8%, and he averaged 354 oh. watts. The pace was on there. Yeah. But after such a hard stage, after all those efforts, it is hard to withstand that. And I'm a bit worried that we're not going to be able to make this. I think for us as well, we've only done a few of the efforts on that yeah. day. Well, no, exactly that. And uh, now we found a climb here in Wales, like you said, the Gospel Pass, which is our Jais Kibal climb. So yeah. here goes. See if we can make it to the top within the Gruppetto. Right. Come on, Connor. So Hank's moral support, his mechanical has already ruled him out. Hanging in there. To be honest, I was dropped in the last climb, so I'm almost chasing the Gruppetto at this point. Feeling good for the moment. Just about hanging in there on the power. And Gruppetto riding is tough. You've done a hard day already. You've been put through your paces by the GC contenders and the climbers on terrain that isn't your speciality. And at the end of it all, once you've been dropped, you still have to put down a solid effort just to get to the end of the stage. The toughest thing is, you know you're going to be doing the exact same thing again tomorrow if it's a mountainous one. But I think you just need to focus on the pedal stroke, the road in front of you, and try and enjoy the view. Halfway through, and this is where you're gritting and bearing it. If you're in the Gruppetto, you're just dying for it to end. It's feeling good at the bottom. <laughs> Coming up, halfway to the top here. Feeling okay, but moment to dig in to hold the pace. It's not riding easy, it's not riding to the cafe. This sort of intensity. After a hard day, we've only done a little bit of what the riders at the tour and this stage had to do. And it just grinds you down. Almost becomes more of a mental battle. It's bringing back memories of hanging on in big climbs. At the end, because I myself rode the Giro in the Vuelta and oh, some of these big mountains, they really are a mental battle with yourself. I think we've reached the summit. Woo! So we've made it to the top of the Jaisabal. No, the Welsh Gospel Pass. But nevertheless, it felt as hard as the Jaisabal for Mark Cavendish, didn't it? It did, yeah. And we've only done real two serious efforts. And yeah. at this point, it was like four hours into the race. I mean, and you'd get into the finish, you'd just start the tour. It's all just ballistic. The crowds would have been mental. But still, that effort does hurt when you have that much climbing. The TSS 300 in that stage, so you feel the fatigue at the end of it. Yeah, and that's only going to get more and more as you get on into the race. But I want to know what your data was for the climb. What was your wattage there? So we're on the highest mountain pass in Wales. The effort was 25 minutes long, so we actually ran out of road a little bit. But still, my power is 284 watts, so actually just about there. There you just. go. But I was suffering, and I dug deep, and I've only been riding for the little, little while we have been, not the full five hours that Mark did in the stage, and also saving that bit more. It really does put it into perspective, doesn't it? Right, now we've got to descend off the course fast, but in true Mark Cavendish fashion, we thought we'd end with a sprint. 
Got to try and replicate the sprint. I'm not known for my accelerations. No, but don't worry, mate. Let's I'll give lead, it a go. I'll lead you out like Mark Renshaw back in the day. Here we come, Connor's sprint. Mark Cavendish's 1600 watt sprint. Up, 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 up. Solid effort from Connor and DeWitt. Get on in. And so we completed our ride, sprint and all. Big thanks to Training Peaks for providing us with an inside look at a rider's effort. And of course to Mark Cavendish, who we hope to see back on the road soon. Let us know in the comments how you think you'd have survived this brutal stage. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.